going on guys? Today I'm bringing you guys the video of the uh, me doing the cooling system for the Project 914. Um, this is something that's needed to be done for a while. Uh, when I got the car, the cooling system that was in it, sorry I got a hair in my mouth, was um, very insufficient. So it was this Jeep Cherokee radiator, which it's an aluminum radiator, so I mean it's a pretty decent radiator actually. Um, well, was at one point, was right here against the firewall in the engine bay. And the problem with that is there's no airflow through these engine bays, so no air went through the radiator besides what the fan was pushing. So obviously if you pushed it hard, it's going to get hot. So in order to remedy that, I'm relocating the radiator up front, which I have done partially already. So. Let me show you at the back how far I've gotten. So I've got this radiator hose, which is an OEM Subaru piece, going down to there, and then attached the end of that is going to be one of these. And these I just had milled up. They're one and a half to one and a quarter um, adapter pieces made out of aluminum. And uh, those are going to go to these hoses, which I bought at Napa. Those are yellow stripe radiator ho or heater hoses, technically. And those are running along the underside of the car. Um, I need to put some more of those conduit hangers on there so that it doesn't sag so much. See, it's sagging up front. But two of those running on the underside of the car. And they come up front. Hole cut in the front firewall where they come through and then come to this radiator. This is a stock radiator out of a. Um, Second, yeah, second gen Subaru Legacy. Um, and then attached to the radiator, we're going to have these, which are universal um, tubing. Right now it has a piece of tubing on there, but these are on here because they have these metal bands inside of them. So they can do tight bends without kinking. So these are going to bend down, and then I'm going to have those adapter pieces in between here and here because these are two different sizes. Um, in terms of airflow, what we are going, what we actually is already done, um, because I started this a while back and I haven't finished it yet. So originally these holes are all here, but this is all metal. So these, these are both cut out. So that's all the intake. I mean, that's all the airflow we need for in, out, holes in the fender wells. That should be enough. Um, I'm just going off of what other people have done, and that seems to be enough um, airflow. And then here is the radiator shroud. There's also pieces on the sides that we need to finish making, and then the bottom piece, um, so that when air comes through here, it passes through the radiator, doesn't go around it. That's very important. Um, but yeah, guys, it's the whole plan for the radiator setup, so uh, we can just get started. So I started to disassemble the shroud bit a bit, and you can see right here. Took this side piece off, and then that side piece is still on there, and I took the top piece off. Um, the side pieces were not tall enough. I just sort of made them to mock up in the beginning. Um, so this is sort of my new stencil for the side pieces. So I'm going to trace it out on this piece of steel, and then I'm going to um, cut it out and trim it until it fits perfectly so that I can bolt this to that side piece and that side piece to the bottom piece right there and then do the same on the other side and then we need to figure out a way to shroud out the bottom piece and then we can figure out a way to bolt it all together and then we can figure finish up running the lines and everything so that uh, there's a water in it I guess. <laughs> Alright so let's do this. So in order to cut out this uh, trace template all I'm going to use is an angle grinder with my cut-off disc to attach to it.
that looks pretty good. Fitment against this firewall that's nice and tight. Um, you can see it's nice and it's there. And then the line up here, we may need to trim it a bit. Um, we can check, but you can see how low this end is this end up here, which is how I want it. Because this piece sits right in this crack. So it needs to go right along there. Now I can, uh, I'm just gonna cut out a piece for the other side. Do the same thing. And I'll do it All right guys, so I ran out of time the other day, but uh, I ended up getting both these cut out. So now all I gotta do is, uh, I'm gonna drill the holes and attach them to uh, the base piece. Um, and then I can start trimming them, because they're probably not gonna be perfect on the first try. Uh, but trim them until they fit. And then, so basically I have a piece of 90 degree angle aluminum that's going from the base piece with holes drilled in it. And then I drill holes in these so that the night, so that I can put bolts through it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing up here so it can attach to the top piece. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do now. So right now though, I'm gonna drill the holes, attach it to it, put the top piece on there, figure out where I need to drill everything so that I can attach to it. Another piece of the aluminum so I can mount it all on there. So, uh, yeah. So, before you start drilling on something like uh, sheet metal, it is important that you uh, make sure to put a punch on the place that you're drilling. The reason for that is so that the bit doesn't just wander around and then you just have a hard time getting it in the right place. And I don't have an automatic one, but I do just have this in the hammer. So, do that. And then the drill bit will go right in that little dent, and we'll be good to go. We won't have any problems with the water. <laughs> so I test fit both of the side pieces. The driver's side fit perfectly. Um, the passenger side, we're just gonna have to trim this little one piece off right here while I'm gonna pop into the duct tape. Um, okay, so we'll just trim that. And then what we're gonna do is mount these pieces of aluminum like that on there. And then that way we'll have a place for the top piece to bolt on. And then the shroud will be pretty much done. Um, we'll have to do one more piece that uh, covers up the bottom of the shroud so there's not room underneath the radiator since that shroud piece does bow a little bit. Um, and then just seal it all up. Uh, and then put the radiator in and do all, finish, finish up all the hoses and everything, all that. And then the cooling system will be pretty much finished up. So yeah, let's get this piece trimmed. So I got the fitment of everything um, set up right. So now I'm just gonna drill two holes on each of these sides so that one side can bolt to um, the side plates of the shrouding and the other side can bolt to the top piece um, since I have all the fitment of that set up. Uh, so I'm just going to drill holes in these and then drill uh, holes in the side plates as well and then drill holes in the top piece. So I can bolt it all together and then once it's bolted all together I'm actually going to um, make some little uh, what do I call them? Uh, top radiator mounts, I guess. And then I need to go get some rubber bushings to the top of the radiator mounts. And those will attach to the top plate of the shrouding, since I have nothing else to really go off of um, to mount it. Um, and those will just be simple, just a little piece of steel with stock pieces, or just little pieces of, um, I think they're just little pieces of steel and aluminum that you bend over, and then a little rubber bushing underneath. Um, so that'll be simple, and then, yeah, it'll be all, all be nice.
the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. So now that these are all drilled up, um, what I can do is attach these to attach these to the side panels, and then attach these to the base panel, and then put it all in the car, put the top panel in there, figure out um, what positioning I want for it, make it just perfect, and I'll go in with a Sharpie, and I'll um, mark the holes where they need drilled. So I'll do that now. Hey guys, so I've got the top piece all uh, fitted up on there with the holes drilled in it. And it fits pretty well. It's pretty good. I only have three bolts in it right now. I just took the other one out because I forgot to take the video first. But as you can see, there's not too many holes. Obviously there's the cracks up in the corners. Um, but those will get smaller as I... Uh, I'm going to build some mounts. Some upper radiator mounts right here. Um, and then those will get a little bit smaller. But I'll just fill those with foam, whatever, whatever's left of those. And then I'm also going to do a piece of metal across the bottom that comes up to here on the radiator so that uh, it seals up against that. And I'm going to do that just with this piece of angle aluminum. And then if I do need um, some sheet metal as well to bolt to that to get up to that height of the radiator, then I'll just cut that and end up, end up using that. So now I'm just going to measure this real quick, cut that. Um, drill some holes in it, drill some holes in that base piece, attach them to each other, see how it looks, and then see if I need to cut a piece of uh, sheet metal to get it up to the radiator. So yeah, I'll do that now. So it looks like with this piece of aluminum bolted to it, that should be enough. Um, if you look in here right now, I know it's a little bit dark, but um, if the base piece is lifted up enough, then that uh, piece of aluminum goes right up to the base of the radiator so all I'm gonna do is mark that front there right now and then I'll go drill it all and attach it and then the shrouding will basically be done I'll just do a little bit of sealing with um, some adhesive foam and then I can build the mounts for the upper radiator and then we can finish all the hosing and then the cooling system will be pretty much done besides the uh, fans and all I got to do for the fans is hook up the three wires it's gonna be a wire for power ground and a, a switch that is ran on um, temperature of the coolant so should be pretty simple so yeah I'm gonna mark that now and then we'll get uh, mounting that I already hit three spots with a punch so now I'm gonna use drill the holes So now everything's back in the car. Um, I don't have the top piece bolted on just so I can show you guys everything. Let me grab my flashlight. Um, how it all is coming out. Um, so as you can see, that bottom piece goes right up just below the first layer of fins. Um, there are small gaps on the edges, 
Um, that's gonna be all right. Just gonna fill it with a small layer of foam. Uh, I'm not going for the, you know, the most perfect build. Just as long as it functions well, I'm happy. And uh, when I bolt the top piece on, these go all the way to the edges, all the way to the end tanks, like so. And uh, yeah, so basically I'll have to put a little foam here, a little foam in that corner, and then foam in those two corners. But besides that, everything seals up real nice. Um, essentially all we need is just, you know, something to flow so that it, or direct the air so that the, it flows through the radiator rather than going around it. See, if I didn't have a shroud at all, there'd be a bunch of space around the radiator. Um, and all the air would just take the path of least resistance, which would obviously be that. Um, but now with that all set up, that should uh, make it cool nicely. So let me bolt the top piece back on and I'll be right back. So now I've got uh, the top piece bolted on. I'll show you that here. So this is how it is gonna look basically all finished up. Um, now all I have to do for mounting wise is create the upper radiator mounts um, because otherwise the radiator is able to do that. Um, so all they're gonna be is just two straps of metal, essentially, it's gonna be thin sheet metal that I'll just, uh, it'll come off of here and go down and bend over the edge. That's how this factory is actually uh, for this particular radiator. And then I'll put a little piece of rubber underneath there, underneath the straps to, so that it's uh, isolated. So uh, for this sort of stuff, whenever I make it, I just use a piece of cardboard to make the um, template and then I cut the metal out of that so I'll let you guys watch that entire process so let me set the tripod real quick guys basically it's just a tiny little rectangle it's super simple um, and all that's going to do is go underneath the top piece put a bolt for that and then uh, fold over there like that with a piece of rubber underneath to isolate it so yeah you can get that set out of uh, sheet metal real quick Take the top piece off, make sure I drill the hole in the right places, um, and then I can bolt them up and then cut the rubber out so that it fits, and then bolt it all together and I'll be done with all the shrouding, essentially. So yeah. So I've got all the, uh, all the marks made where these holes need to be drilled on both the mounts and the top piece. So now I'm just going to uh, center punch all of these, and then I'll drill the holes in all of them. mounts bolted on. I can go uh, test fit it one last time to the rest of the shroud and then if it fits and everything looks good then I'm gonna go cut the rubber and we should be done with the shroud. So I got the top piece test fitted again with the uh, radiator mounts on 
There they are. And I'm pretty happy with the fitment on these. They fit just about perfect. Um, so now I'm just gonna grab the rubber, cut out um, little rubber pieces that fit underneath there, and then I should be done essentially with the shrouding. Um, yeah, and then I can just go and basically just put the hoses together, which will take me just a few minutes. Um, and then yeah, that'll be the end of the episode. So let me uh, grab the rubber and I'll cut it up and then uh, put the hoses on. So here's the rubber I got. It's just, I picked it up from East Hardware. It's just supposed to be used for, you know, like universal gaskets and stuff, but it'll work perfect for this application. So um, all I'm gonna do is use that same template on here and then cut it out. And then uh, basically just wedge it in between there and that'll be it. It's pretty simple. There we go, so now I can just go mount them underneath there and we'll see how it looks. So there we have it guys, there's the rubber underneath there so it's nice and isolated. This still needs to be tightened down so it's not wiggling. And then this one I just need to pull off there and bend um, right at here so that it fits there just a little bit better but you get the idea. Um, so now I'm going to do is hook up all the hoses and everything and uh, we should be good on the cooling system so let's do that. Okay guys, so as you just saw, I just um, set up all the hoses in there and I would have put all clamps on them and everything, but I am planning on pulling this all apart and painting the engine bay first. So I figured I'll just leave it unclamped. This one's actually a little bit loose. Oh, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna paint all the engine bay. That's why I left all the trim and the weather stripping off of the holes and everything as well but as you can see it looks pretty good um the hoses are nice not kinked or anything but as you can see the hoses come off the radiator radiator shroud looks good just the six button head screws on there and then up in here nice and sealed against the radiator there's a few spots where i need to put some um, but besides that it should all be good so yeah that's the end of the video guys that's basically the biggest stuff for the cooling system. Obviously there's a few other things like hooking up the fans, but I'll show you me hooking up the fans when I redo the wiring in the car. Um, Cause I'm just gonna leave that until when I do the wiring. Uh, but yeah, that's the biggest part of the cooling is the shroud and the radiator mount and uh, hoses and everything. So yeah, um, if you guys liked the video, make sure you hit like. If you guys wanna watch some more of these, uh, hit subscribe. Next video will probably be me just stripping down the whole engine bay and uh, painting it and everything. So that'll be a nice quick video. It shouldn't take me too long to get it out, maybe a couple of days. And then after that, I'll release a good long video of me redoing the wiring. Uh, I'll have to go to the scrapyard, get a new loom and everything. But yeah, that's gonna be it. Uh, again, make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace.